da, da, da. There we go. Ah, greetings, foolish mortals. Ah, can't forgot to do that thing which she was supposed to do. I'm supposed to have the intro music play, but uh, stupid little old cat me for kind of fucking forgot because when she did a bunch of file transferring earlier this week, she forgot to make sure that all her files all lined up when she used her special buttons. And I'm sorry about that. Hi, greetings, foolish mortals. Tis I, cat, your, you know, queen of chaos, your entity of cra crazy, your white claw auntie. No, 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 no. I hope everyone is doing a, having a good day today. Um, is everyone excited for this? How is everyone in chat? Chat doing good? Chat, talk to me. I know I have at least one of you in here. Hold on, we might have a guest. Hopefully we have a guest, because we're going to have to go through some deep fucking lore, and I'm going to need someone to basically focus and help me make sure I say focus. Hello. Okay, okay, that's all working. Okay, good. So, um, one second. Let me just uh, do something special. We're going to need some background music, because, you know, it's kind of sort of needed, because if we just have nothingness and my silence and the sound of my... Do I want to know why I'm looking at a hot pot with a hot dog in it? Damn, Japan, you're weird. Um, yeah, that's Japanese. I was right. Ha ha. Uh, Team Fortress 2 Music. The official TF2 wiki. Ah, uh, thank you. Hold on. Is this the right one? I hope you guys are ready for TF2 goodness. Um, anyway. You whittle loud, TF2 music. Cat, why don't you just get an audio splitter program? Make your life a little easier. No. Anyway, greetings, everyone. Oh, Cabal's emotes are really great. I am envious of Cabal's ability. I'm also worried that one day I'll be pop. Uh, one day a Cabal fan is just gonna say I'm a knockoff Cabal, and I'm like, no, look at me. I'm cute. Look at me. I am not scary. Cabal is much cooler. Anyway, greetings, foolish mortals. Says I, Cat. As everyone knows, I did a subathon a while ago, and one of the sub goals happens to be me having to explain the lore of Team Fortress 2. I hope you guys are excited for that. I'm nervous as fuck. <laughs> so, let me just give you guys a little idea why I decided to do this. I've been playing TF2 um, bleh, for, a, for a long ass time. I've been playing TF2 since it first became uh, free to play in 2009. This is our year of our lore 2022. If you haven't figured out how long I have been into the Team Fortress 2 fandom by yet, I am very sorry for your education. <laughs> I've been in this for a long time. And while I am not the most act I do not have the most hours and everything like a lot of other Team Fortress 2 friends I have, I was one of those who was the lore nerd. When I found I fell in love with TF2 via the Meet the videos. If you happen to have ever remembered the Meet the Medics, the Meet the Meet the Medic, Meet the Spy, Meet the Anything. My favorite one is Meet the Medic, to be perfectly honest. It is one of my favorite ones I love doing sometimes. Well, set this nuts medicine. Um hold on. Let me just check messages. Uh, by the way, I was just checking messages. I am a huge TF2 nerd. And I've also now noticed my model is technically off kilter on the screen, and it's kind of sort of bugging me, and I need to fix that. <laughs> Cat, you are not trying to just, you know, avoid the inevitable, are you? What? No, me? Avoid trying to do responsibility things? What, what the kind of crazy-ass shit is that? Anyway. So. Screaming Eagles! Yes, the Market Gardener! Ugh. I can't do I can't do soldier worth a damn. I can't rocket jump worth I hit the wrong button. Ignore that. I can't rocket jump worth shit. Anyone I have been I have the TF2 community back in the day was one of the great, nicest little fucking communities ever. And basically, you know, were willing to teach people how to do the thing. And I did go on rocket jumping lesson servers. I just can't do the timing. Soldier, I think, has my least amount of hours, even though a lot of people say Soldier is the easiest one. I really got good with, um, to give you other ideas of what I was, I am a 
Pyro, I am a, what I call a situational main, which basically means depends on the situation. That is how, that is what I play. I mainly play though is Medic, Sniper, Pyro, and Heavy. Those were the four. And if I'm doing Man vs. Machine, I was a Heavy Man vs. Machine main. Fear me. <laughs> Don't fear me. I'm, I'm not the best TF2 player. If you've ever watched my TF2 streams, the few I have done on this site, you know I'm not that good. I do my best, I try my best. I'm here for fun, not to kick ass and take names unless I feel extra sadistic. Um, but like I said, while I did not play Hello, TF2... Hello, Ben. Hello, Albert John. Okay, can we please keep the alerts to a bare minimum? I'm doing lessons today. I should have turned my alerts off, but I didn't. I didn't think about that. Anyway, so when it comes to TF2, I love TF2 with a passion. It is my favorite game. It is a game that helped me become more willing to produce fandom-like content and not feel judged about it. Uh, TF2 is actually the fan... F uh, while I did used to write fanfic privately, Team Fortress 2 was the fan... F was the, uh, fandom that I made fa that I made fanfic for and published on AO3. Yes, it's there! Also, hi, Survivor. How are you? How you doing, bud? Uh, do you want to do the whole call thing now? Are you ready to basically your job is to make sure I stay on the fucking path? What is it, Buckshot? I told you. I'm doing lessons about TF2. Oh, <laughs> Fire has the sword. Don't think he won't. So I am that massive of a Team Fortress 2 fan. Again, I have been playing since 2009. While my hours are not great and lengthy like a lot of people who've been playing since 2009, I was more active in the fandom aspect. The fan fiction writing, the fan art creation, the TF2 role playing blog I had on Tumblr. Cough! Um, <laughs> I'm not ashamed of it, I had fun. Okay. Uh, da -da 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 -da. uh, Vire, I was just gonna do a private call so it's just you and me so we don't have random people just popping in and out. Um, Bugshot! Yes! Hi, I don't know how to tell you this. I'm a girl in fandom. The role-playing blogs are inevitable. Hi, Vire. Hello. This is Survivor. Vire's a helmet. Why are you a helmet and you're not the pumpkin that I made? Oh, that might be on my back, fault, my side. One second. Yeah. Fugi Tech. Yeah, I was just about to wonder that. <laughs> I was about to wonder. You were about to wonder that too. Yeah. Yeah, I was. Yeah, I'm, I'm playing for Street to catch up. Yeah, just give me a second. Yeah. Uh, I'll just revert it. Revert it. There you are. Now you'll be your pumpkin self. There you go. Look, you're spooky! <laughs> Hello. I'm very happy. It's very spooky for a spooky. The fuck is a role playing blog? Oh, Buckshot, you sweet, naive child, you. So there's this lovely little. So there's this. Puts a blanket over Survivor. Anyway, there is a lovely Sorry. there's a lovely little thing known as T there's a lovely little thing known as Tumblr. Tumblr is a blogging platform. And basically what it was is you had many blog platforms of people pretending to be characters from Team Fortress 2, variations, different colored teams beyond just the red and blue, and original characters. That was me. I I was my uh, character, which my blog is actually still active. Not really, but it's still on Tumblr. Good luck finding it was based on round was, was basically one of the tenth classes, which I put a lot of research into, and there's fanfic about her. And good luck finding it. Uh, <laughs> so Team Fortress Two is my bread and butter, and I love TF Two. If I took up streaming earlier than I did when I did, I definitely would have been a Team Fortress Two streamer. Does that give you guys an idea of what I would have been like? How much TF Two is a major part of my life? If you also remember my Twitter, when people were trying to do the safe TF Two thing, you knew I was highly active in it. Does this give you guys some kind of idea of how well I know my shit? Fear me. Is basically what I'm saying right now. Pet the pumpkin. So, Team Fortress 2 lore is my jam. I know a lot about Team Fortress 2 lore. In certain circles, I used to be known as Cat Masmus, the keeper of TF2 lore. Which is a play on one of the characters, Marasmus, which we will cover later. So, the Team Fortress... Team oh, Fort God, Marasmus. Shush, 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 talking pumpkin. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm just being silly. Yeah, you know? that's actually one of the big things I'm looking forward to hearing about because I have, I know nothing about Marasmus and I would like to learn more. Oh, Marasmus is one of my favorite characters. Remember, Cat Masmus, keeper of TF2 lore. That was me. Are we going to be discussing the comics? Yes, we will. 
the comics will be discussed. So what I'm going to do is going to be very nice and sweet to you guys. We will start with the basic lore, and then we will go down the iceberg. And hope, and basically, there are no charts. There are no visual aids. Well, there will be. I have, um, I will have visuals up. will be on my art screen, and basically I will post up my multiple Team Fortress 2 references I had that I've collected throughout the years because I am an artist, and, you know, I had to have references of all the weapons and all the outfits. Can you figure out how deep I got into TF2? Can, can you guys see how bad it is? Buckshot, my lore stream. If you want to do your own TF2 lore stream, you can use the comics all you want. I am not going to be using the comics because I tried to do that, but instead of me actually talking about it in depth into the way that I liked it, I just started reading the comics, which is not really what I want to go for right now. I want to do an actual conversation, talky-talky thing where I basically get to ramble for 20 minutes, okay? Or 12 hours, however long this takes. So, uh, so how is everyone doing, by the way? Is there, are you excited about this, buyer? Are you excited? I'm very excited. I'm also, I'm also excited for other things, but yes, I am very excited for this specific moment. This is the wrong, talk about Team Fortress. wrong one. Right one. Don't worry, don't worry. We'll get to that one later. <laughs> we'll get to the gaming aspect later. I'm just going to do a little modifications to my... Make myself a little bigger. Oh, you're not here. Oh, yeah. Um. So, fun fact, I got really mad at OBS. <laughs> Already a so wonderful sign. And so OBS has been basically eating my RAM like I eat chocolate. And basically, instead of doing individual sources of uh, the Fuki Tech sources, I've just now stuck to the group concept, and I forgot to put the group in here. <laughs> so anyway, where were we? Team Fortress 2 is a game. Oh god, it's like me doing presentations in high school all over again. Someone help me. Okay. <laughs> I feel that. Oh god. The mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. Uh, anyway, back on topic. What, what is TF? What is Team what Fortress is Two? What is Team Fortress Two? Uh, what is Team Fortress Two? Team Fortress Two is a first-person shooter game that came out in. I can tell you exactly when it came free to play. I can't tell you when it came out out. <laughs> it's, been, it's been. I want to say early two thousands. Yes. Cause I know. Cause I played. Cause I bought the game. You have the I orange have, box. Do you by chance still have that orange I box? I don't. I don't have the orange box I bought digitally. Fuck. Because, fun fact, if you own the orange box version of Team Fortress 2, you could put in a special code to get a special um, uh, hat that I want, but I can't get it. That's eh, all right. I have the official Archimedes and Spycrab. Yeah, I have Archimedes and Spycrab plushies in real life in my house. Archimedes is staring at me right now. <laughs> I'm assuming that's the... Uh... The what's name hat little hel the helmet right yep the helmet it's the mil it's the army helmet yeah you want one yeah i have that <laughs> i'm kidding i'm kidding it's untrade I, have big, I have the biggest smile on my face right now that you have something anyway. i want <laughs> yep and uh back on topic back on topic thank you survivor's whole job is basically cat stay on topic so team fortress 2 was a game that came out in 2007 became free in 2009 that's my domain that's where i am i can i played it in 2009 i fell in love with the meet the videos i don't know if i can show the meet the videos on stream but if you look up meet the medic which is my personal favorite the music for meet the medic is currently playing in my head right now thank you you get an idea uh, team Fortress 2 is a first-person uh, team-based shooter game where basically there are two teams, red versus blue, and you basically are fighting each other. There's Control Point, King of the Hill, Capture the Flag, a lot of different game things. It was a very common free to uh, first-person shooter game. Now, you're all thinking, Cat, it's just a basic-ass first-person shooter game that basically is team fighting and all that jazz. How is there lore? <laughs> How is there lore to something so simplistic? Oh, my friend. Sit down and relax. I am about to share you some very wonderful things. So, where shall I start? Should I start at, like, the very beginning of the TF2 timeline, or should I just stick to, like, explaining, like, the surface stuff and then do the timeline? Vire, this is where you help me here. Huh? Sorry, I'm multitasking. What? what? Uh, I'm trying to figure out, should I start at, should I just do the timeline, or should I just go, like, and this is the lore in the game, and then go comics? Uh, timeline. Timeline, it would be easier. Alright! The year! 1830! <laughs> okay, context. Uh, also, Team Fortress 2 is not set in the modern era, which is a very common mistake a lot of people have. Team Fortress 2 is set between the years 1960... 1965, I think, and 1972. In a fictional alternate yeah. universe. Which is gonna get deep, okay? <laughs> 
So, certain things you're going to have to understand. Uh, in the year 1830, Zebediah Man, <laughs> who is the father of the twins, Red Tark and Blue Tark, uh, Red Tark and, I want to say Blue Tark, but I'm like, it's not Blue Tark, cat. There's a reason why I have the wiki available, just to make sure I don't say the wrong names. Because I've had that's that like, problem when I was practicing. <laughs> yeah, I think it's Blue Tark, as in, like, Plutarch. Yeah, that's Blue Tark. Redman and Blue Tark. Zebediah... Yeah. Uh, so, Redman... Basically, Zebediah Man, who was the owner of big 1980s industry, uh, industrial industry, think classic 1800s industrial industry, they never really cover what he does... But he's an industry man, and he's very, very rich. He's loaded. Think like, not Norman Rockwell, um... Uh, who, the person who oiled Standard Oil, basically. Th what? Think that guy. He might, he has the money. Now... Yeah. <laughs> he has children. Now, we'll talk, there's multiple children, but we're gonna just focus on the two main kids right now, alright? Blue Tark and Redman. Who are twins, who fucking hate each other. Yeah, Ebenezer Scrooge, if he was Mr. Burns. Thank you, Buckshot. So basically, yeah, he, they fucking hate each other, and all they want to do is wait for Daddy to die so they can get the money. Now, Zebediah Man does die, but states, y'all have to earn it. And basically, they fight. Basically, they go, uh, all my money goes to these people, these people, these people. I'm about, I'm not so grabbing the comics right now to make sure I'm correct on something, because sometimes I'm wrong on things. I like to point out, I admit when I'm wrong. I can actually interject because uh, it's at this point, it's because of his kids making poor investment choices is why uh, it's why the patriarch of the family got so many diseases by visiting America and and basically see basically them buying gravel pit and a bunch of wor essentially worthless properties. Yes. That um, uh, he died that he died from various diseases from America visiting because while well, being super pissed off of his kids. Yes. And... I do remember that. Very distinctly. Yeah, that's it. I, that is in the comics. Um, yes. Hold on. I'm actually direct. I have actually the raw scans of the comics that I use for references, and I'm trying to find the exact one. It is that it talks about his family more. In. Uh. So anyway, in New Mexico, by the way, this is in New Mexico. <laughs> this whole game is set in New Mexico. New Mexico, a horrible desert. No one wants to live here. Well, these three idiots do. <laughs> No, this is not that bad. This, this is alternate universe. Alternate Mexico, universe so. New Mexico ain't that great. <laughs> alternate history New Mexico is not that great. Yes, 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 we know. Germany, Australia, as well as Scotland all had the great keep, my favorite map. So, basically what happens is they have a bunch of useless land that is full of useless gravel. More on that gravel later, because everyone... it's Because basically, in-game, you think you're just fighting for gravel and trying to get property. And whoever has the most property wins, in essence. Now about that, so basically, started in the 1800s, they basically did, they basically hired mercenaries to fight for them. I'm going to now actually use some comic visual aids, but I'm not going to read the comics. I'm going to be like, look at the pretty pictures. So they hired mercenaries to fight for them. And again, this was in the 1800s. Ahem. Yes, that's Abraham Lincoln as the pyro. <laughs> And Nikola Tesla, Davy Crockett, uh, Wild Bill, they act uh, John Henry, Wild Bill Hickok. You can see the references here. John Wilkes Booth was not one of them. John Wilkes Booth wasn't one of the mercenaries. Abe Lincoln was. John Henry, Nikola Tesla, they're not actually those people. They're just you know reference you know look wise. It's never confirmed what Abraham because Abraham Lincoln also allegedly in the comics actually was built like a fucking Mack truck. Although knowing how Abraham Lincoln lived in his real world life, I could believe that. Anyway, where was mm -hmm. I? So they hired mercenaries. Zebediah Man dies. Mercenaries are hired to basically fight over the land in the quote-unquote useless gravel. You know, because they were supposed to share and what sh did not do that. What's sharing? Among <laughs> amongst incredibly wealthy industrialists, non-existent. <laughs> exactly. And here's a fun thing. The gravel is not useless like I mentioned. Okay? The gravel actually is very, very valuable. <clears throat> Cut to Australia. <laughs> we have to do a side tangent to Australia. <laughs> and we'll continue the main timeline in a second. Australia is, um, not like Australia. Buckshot, no intervening. I will put the no- I, I will- I will- I will poke you. Poke, poke, poke. 
So, Australia is not like Australia here. Kinda. How do I explain it? It's basically Australia is full of a bunch of big, strong, muscular people, yes, people in general, who have chest hair shaped like Australia, and big old bushy mustaches, and are basically that weird, uh, uh, Australia outdoorsy craziness plus Florida man times ten. Okay? Basically think of, um... Bully, gentlemen! Teddy, Ro Teddy, Teddy <laughs> Roosevelt, if you lived in Australia, did nothing but fight alligators and, uh, you know, crocodiles. Holes for like the majority of his life while also being super intelligent yes they were hyper intelligent and also hyper violent australia is a very interesting nation now the reason why australia had all of this crazy technology and manliness and basically if you remember the meme of the guy who basically goes stab wound i think you mean flesh pocket that's australia that's saxton hale and the saxton hale family who are very semi-integral to the whole thing because saxton hale is a Badass character, and I'd love to talk about him. So, um, basically Australia has this wonderful, lovely little mineral known as Australia. It is the unattainable of the universe, if it gives you an idea. Okay? Of this universe, yes. Of this, uni this universe. Basically, it is a gold-like material that is imbued with a lot of shit! <laughs> is it radioactive? Question mark! <laughs> That basically, well, it does have some kind of, like, radiation, but not, like, the radiation, like, radioactive spider bite kind of situation, where basically it has an effect on people who are massively exposed to it. It is actually shown in the comic, I think, Loose Cannon, where uh, Radigan Conagar, we'll talk about him in a second, basically he is a Texan who was experimenting with uh, Australium, and he also got basically the Australium effect, but it was Texas style. I'm sorry, I have the song Texas style in my head now. TF2, you con you content creating meme lords. So, so Australium is a very valuable mineral, which has many different properties. It is the snake oil, but it actually does work. If it says it does this thing, it does this thing. Okay? So, basically, Blue Mind, if I remember right, was it Blue Tark or was it Red Mind who hired them? I am so not... I I forget, like, who, who, who if, it's gonna go, if it's going to go where I think it's, it's one of the two. It's, I forget which. I want to okay. say, say Blue Tark. So Blue Tark is basically the, basically hires this engineer known as Radigan Conhanger. Please keep a note of that last name. It will be important, and I will have a pop quiz later. There's not going to be a pop quiz. I'm not that stupid. I didn't make a quiz. I didn't have time. I was panicking. I'm doing everything by the seat of my fucking pants right now like I'm in high school. Cat, cat, focus. Okay. Focus on the presentation, not about, not about the anxiety. The process. So there is a yes, man known that. as Ran as uh, Ranigan Conhanger, who is basically a brilliant engineer of the something 1890. Thank you, a brilliant engineer of the 1890s, and basically Blue Tark goes, hi Codex, uh, basically goes, I know Australium has some shit. I want you to make me a she machine that makes me immortal so I can outlive my idiot brother Red Redmond. So I can gain the money. That's basically what he does. And, Radig and, and Radigan goes, at Well, not I. He actually says, all right. No, he does say I, but he says all right. Right? I. I. <laughs> <laughs> and basically builds an immortal machine. Basically. It is a machine that makes Blue Tark immortal. But here's the thing. Red Tard's, uh, Redman's assistant decided to visit. Now, she might look familiar, and I will talk about that later. His assistant comes in and goes, I'm fully aware what you are doing to my client's brother, Blue Tard. Blue Tark. I want you to do that for Redman, and I will provide you with the Australium. The stuff that basically will make him immortal. And once again, I, <laughs> I'm doing this. Let's have fun. And basically, Blue Tark and Redmond are fucking immortal. By the way, if you want to know what Australium looks like, because I did mention it. This is Australia, by the way. This is Australia. Please enjoy Australia. <laughs> And basically, Australia, and that's Australian right there, to give you an idea. And basically, she's like, I'll give you all this shit. 
You make the immortal machine for both people. I don't care. Also, uh, right? And basically, he was like, all right. And he also experimented on it and basically, uh, uh, call hanger basically got affected by the Australian via overexposure and basically became like a Texas version of an Australian from TF2. And they basically, the two brothers, have been immortal ever since. Kinda. So. <laughs> There's more to this. Am I, am I, am I keeping, is everyone understanding this so far? Are, are we good so far? Good so far. Okay. So the brothers basically, again, like I said, this they hired mercenaries to fight each other and basically become immortal. Since they both basically can't outlive each other now because they're immortal, they basically have been fighting since the 1800s. And, well, it's pretty interesting. So there's fighting, and basically in the 1930s, the first Team Fortress 2 came. Basically, for those who do not know, TF2 is a fucking sequel. The 2 is kind of an obvious, right? <laughs> it is a... Uh -huh. Team Fortress, the original, the OG, which, uh, fun fact, was originally a Quake mod, which became its own thing, then became Team Fortress 2, because basically Valve hired the people who made it. They actually did put the original Team Fortress Classic into the lore, and it gets hella crazy there. Now, you see this lovely little blue engineer right here? You see this lovely little lovely little guy right here that lovely that th th this this very handsome fellow right here this very handsome cute little southern boy anyway right this sweet little southern boy his last name is also Cohanger. <laughs> does anyone see where we're going with this his last name is also Cohanger. uh and there's actually, do I have a picture of it? I should somewhere. I do not. But his name is also Cohanger. Again, keep keep that name in mind because it's kind of important, okay? They basically were working for them as well as they are still fucking immortal. And then they died. The immortal guys, and you know, basically Team Fortress Classic happens, and then the start of Team Fortress 2 basically happens where these new mercenaries are hired. I'll talk about these new mercenaries and this, the, the mercenaries that you know and love, and three of them I think are hot. All of them are hot. Especially the pyro. <laughs> That's funny. Which leads to TF, which events happen, which lead to TF2 today. Now, <laughs> now we get to the interesting shit, because it's all, you know, semi-calm to an extent. But now we're going to talk about the third child of Zebediah Man. The third child no one really knows about. His name is Graymond. <laughs> Think this is a good time for the Graymond talk? Yeah, we're going to talk about Graymond. Oh, Graymond. Oh, fucking Graymond. So how do we explain Graymond in the nicest way possible? I, I can sell one word. What? <laughs> He's an asshole. He's an asshole. Asshole's nice. That's us being nice. We're not being nice to Graymond right now. We're actually going to be honest. Okay, Blood Brothers. Okay. How, how, I think let's begin, let's begin with the birth of the brothers. The birth of the brothers? Yes. So, <laughs> the story of Graymond. One word, eagle. We'll get there. So, basically, yeah, Butarek no. and Redmond are born. They are the two, first two. They are the eldest. They are the twins. They are fighting, squabbling, and everything. A third child is born. Now, there's always been arguments in the fandom if the child is illegitimate or legitimate, a.k.a. was it really Plutarch and Redmond's mom who's the parents, or if not. Now, the thing is, the mother dies. Zebediah doesn't care. Zebediah's like, oh, oh, shame. The wife died. I'll get another. So it kind of gives you an idea of how much, how, how great of a dad Zebediah is, which is not at all. <sighs> and Graymond basically gets kidnapped by eagles. And raised by e Team Fortress well, 2 is a very deep lore. <laughs> I well, forgot you, about uh, feel the fact that upon his birth, he was already speaking and had uh, already, I think, knew like a dozen, a few, a few dozen languages. He like, could, like, yeah. Three. Yeah. <laughs> he's an <a> infant. <laughs> he's an infant. And he's basically, when he is born, he's an infant. He can speak full sentences and speak a couple languages and got kidnapped by eagles. Yeah, because the thing is, his father was like, "Oh, I can't be having this. This is not because of oh, I had no, I have two regular, two 
beastly children and one hyper intelligent one. It's so, also I like forget. I think they also he, stated like the child was quote unquote deformed. All it really is because you do get to see Greymond when he's older. He's shorter than the other two brothers. He's just like a lot smaller. Yeah. I think he might have been premature. Who knows? But it's no, like, I'm saying more for the fact that his father was going to basically have the third child killed for the dumbest reasons. <laughs> which were very dumb, which, you know, I can't even remember what the reasons are, but they are dumb. Oh, yeah. that That's what I was trying to get at. See if you remember. I don't remember. I have the, the comics. I have the raw comics right here. We can look right now and I can just be like, give us a second. We're checking something. That's the story. Yep. Oh, oh, yeah, I found it. I found it. I found it. I'm on the comic. It is Blood Brothers. The problem is I have these numbered of by release date, not numbered by, you know, where they are in the timeline because I'm a moron. Um, so basically... Oh, okay. Redman and Blue Tar... Oh, it's a triplet. He's a triplet. He's not a... It's not... I thought they were a lot older, but no, it was triplets. <laughs> oh, I did not know that. So the cha so the third one, the third child is the weird, creepy, third, creepy Grayman who gets attacked by an eagle, and, and kidnapped by an eagle. Eagle. Apparently, he learned in the womb how to talk and everything, because everyone's like, "How the fuck does this man know how to talk?" I listened in the womb. As you can also see. Grayman looks a lot young. That's why I think... Oh, that might be why I thought he wasn't a, a triplet. I thought because he looks so much younger. It's because he has a much more... Um, a better immort immortality device. So that's why he's not as haggard and looks like Grandpa. Um, so basically, Grayman has been off in the distance, raised by eagles and God knows what other lovely flora and fauna of New Mexico. Coyotes? <laughs> are coyotes in New Mexico? Survivor, are coyotes in New Mexico? Yes. Thank you. They are, in fact, coyotes in New Mexico. So here's the thing. Um, so Grayman comes and meets his two twin brothers again, basically putting them under their false accusations, thinking that the one was going to give up the stuff to the other, basically using their greed as a form of way to take care, you know, to take care of them. And by take care of them, I don't mean give them a nice warm blanket and a cup of hot cocoa. I mean... <clears throat> yeah, I actually put decent funding into my immortality machine. Basically. So basically, Redman and Blutark are <clears throat> off. And by technicalities, by the rule of the will, Greymond now owns all of Team Fortress, the company, which is the main, which is the company. He owns both the Red Company and the Blue Company and the Team Fortress Company. It is all his now. Yeah, uh, Manco, I think, or is that Manco. the other company? Manco. It's called Manco. Sorry. Thank you. Team Fortress is a subsidiary of Manco. Subsidiary of Manco. Manco also owns Red and Blue technicality, but there's enemy. It's weird. It's capitalism, business. <laughs> Oh, well, he doesn't own Manco yet. It's weird. Um, but he will basically potentially own Manco. <laughs> oh, welcome to Team Fortress 2 where the lore gets weird. Um, which leads to basically uh, man versus machine. We'll get that on. We'll, we'll, we'll touch on that in a second. Actually, we'll touch on that now. So basically what ha There's also, like I've mentioned, Saxon Hale. Basically his father and his grandfather are also part of this business. They were the bodyguards of the Zebediahs. Uh, the mans. The men. The mans? The man men? The men man 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 man? Mamana man man? Mina man man? How am I doing so far? I sound like a crazy person. You're explaining Team Fortress 2, Lorcat. If you didn't sound like a crazy person, so I would be scared. Is... Yeah, that. So basically, uh, Greymond offs the two brothers, which leads to. Fun fact! A really great Halloween event, in my personal opinion, which leads also to Merasmus. We'll talk about Merasmus in a second! We'll get there. We're getting there. No, we'll talk about Merasmus now, because we have the undead involved. No, we'll talk about Merasmus later. Merasmus now or later? Later? Later. 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 It's Halloween and stuff, which we'll get to. Which leads to, basically, both their ghost, um, the ghost of Redmond and Blue Tark basically fighting over for what little is left of Manco, because they both died. Right? By Grayman, who hasn't owned Manco yet. It's a process. So basically, there's a whole fun little Halloween event that I love. They're basically, their ghosts are like, throw my brother into hell and I will own Manco. <laughs> basically, it's the push the cart, but we're throwing dead bodies and we go to hell. And it is awesome in my personal opinion. <laughs> I think it's one of the great Halloween maps. <laughs> because it is so stupid. <coughs> because it is so 
fucking stupid because basically for the patch notes we would have hell based patch notes and it's like silly as hell to me. And also, like uh, Buckshot pointed out, this is the only time you ever hear Redman and Blue Tark actually talk in game. They have never talked. There is no voice things. There was no model. There was nothing. We never knew what they sound like. Fun fact: they're both vo voiced by Nolan North. Nolan North is in this game a lot. Okay, Nolan North has taken over for two other characters now as well. More on that later. Where was I? Okay, so Grayman basically wants to take over Manco, and he's going to by force. He builds robots. Basically, the original team of Team Fortress, you know, red team, blue team, it depends on who's the artist, and it's usually they use red team as, like, the main team. Don't ask why there's duplicates and clones. They never cover that shit. Ignore that. <laughs> we can't talk about the clone thing, okay? There's no real explanation to it, technically, lore-wise. Just, 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 just sweep that under the thing. Red yeah, team is... Robots. What? Let's get back to the robots. <sighs> so, basically, red team has been fired. Also blue team, but let's just pretend it's all... The, the comic focuses on red team as the mains. So if I say red team, I mean both red and blue. So red team basically... The team gets fired. They have no jobs. And then Miss Paula... Uh, Miss Pauline, whom I love! Lesbian icon she is. Maybe. Allegedly. Miss Pauline. Basically goes, we have to fight these people because, you know, da-da-da. And it's like, why should we do it? And then she goes, the robots are powered by money. <laughs> How do you convince a bunch of mercenaries to fight robots? You tell them the robots are made out of fucking money, and basically they go after that, and they're like, money? Free money? We just have to kill robots? Okay, we'll do it! And that's how Man vs. Machine became a thing. Also, Hale offering new guns, but money! Money! Money to buy the new guns! You, money! Oh, money! Free money! Free money! Anyway. Um, and that's, and basically the events of Man vs. Machine happened, which also includes <laughs> one of my favorite parts of the comics, which is one of the more sillier comics, but I love it anyway, where, um, basically, uh, there's a fate worth, uh, the comic talks about also, um, ah, fuck. Uh, there's a comic called A Fate Worse Than Chess, which is basically explaining, like, you guys got fired, Saxon Hale is telling you guys this. By the way, Saxon Hale is telling you guys this while he is fighting a fucking puma. Is it a puma he's fighting? No, he's fighting Bigfoot. It's actually kind of fucking funny. <laughs> Especially when you know there's a later event where you get to fight Bigfoot. Kind of. Sort of. Maybe. Saxon Hale is very crazy, and I love Saxon Hale. But basically, um, ugh. I feel like I'm skipping something. Why do I feel like I'm skipping something? Yeti. Sorry, not Bigfoot. Um, so they're fighting uh, robots, and they've been doing that for a while now. And they have so much money, they can just basically burn it and basically use it to keep warm. They've bought, like, all these funny little accessories and everything. Also, there's some time traveling where basically Engineer comes back from the year 1993, and their president's a corgi, and I sit here going, Can I go to that timeline, please? Can we go to the timeline where the president is a corgi? Fire? Fire. Fire died. <laughs> Fire has become a robot now. Beep boop. I'm a robot. Sorry, holy aside conversation. Uh, what was it? Uh, we were trying to figure out what I'm missing in the robot thing. So they talked about how they basically fought the robots. We talked about, uh, by the way, there was the funny infiltration of the robots, which involved them dressing up in cardboard, pretending to be robots, so they could figure out what the fuck is with these man machines. Uh, gray men basically building robots. Gray men building robots. Also, Soldier is basically the, no the king of nose-picking, don't ask. And it's really weird. This is the part I actually have fell off when I was watching the comp reading the comics and I have no idea what we're what's on beyond this point. <laughs> we're still so. technically not even in the big lore comics. I wanna point this out. We're still in the funny shit that happens in the timeline and not even the hardcore shit. We'll get there soon. <laughs> oh, my KBS is dropping. Oh, my yeah, KBS is So I, I can't help you I can't help you at this point. I'm gonna stay on target. <laughs> stay on target. Stay on target. So basically and also the engineer robots are made, which basically is a newest thing that they've uh <clears throat> Hold on, my KVS is acting weird. So, basically, they added the Engineer Robots, which are a new thing, which made TF2, made the game a little harder, made Man vs. Machine a little bit harder if you play higher levels, which was a thing people were complaining about, which, you know, I, I, I'm here, near here or there when it comes to the Engineer Bots. Um, we're currently in Shadow Boxers comic, by the way. Now Ring of Fired. The fun shit. 
This is where we go to... Okay, I've told you some funny little things. Some haha ha kooky things. Yeah, funny eagles. Now we're gonna, for a bit, take a little side mission to explain some of the mercenaries because I think understanding their personalities will give you an idea of what's about to go down and the shit that goes down. So who should we start with first in the whole mercenary lineup? And I'll cover basically a, like a short summary of all of the, of the ones. Hold on, let's have actually a picture of the mercenaries so people have an idea. My vote is Scout. Let's, let's start with the, each one being in the meet, meet the meet the mercenary series. <sighs> go with that. We'll start with Scout. Scout is a wonderful little boy. He's a sweet little child who will get will get punched in the head. Hold on, let's get some visual aids of who Scout is. Not my art references. Uh, do I not have an image of just normal basic ass bitch Scout? Or I do not have an image of normal basic ass bitch Scout. There, there. This is Scout. He is a lovely young boy from bro from Boston. A sweet boy from Boston. Birds, gr grass grows, birds fly. And Brother, I'm getting attacked by the Illuminati. <clears throat> a lovely boy from Boston who basically, if I remember correctly, has nine fucking brothers. I think. Uh, the youngest of eight boys from South Side Boston. The scout learned early how to solve problems with his fist. Uh, seven Olders on his bride. He basically was a fighter. He was the run to the litter. And he is basically what I like to fondly call Chihuahua energy. Yes, you are, Scout. Yes, you are. Yeah, he's a boy from Boston who speaks like he's from Brooklyn. Don't question it. Um, he basically has, uh, he's small, he's angry, <laughs> and no one likes him, and we like to use him as the butt of the jokes all the time. Medics don't heal Scouts, for Scouts are useless. No, they're not. They're actually very viable. This is just me being funny. Um, Scout is a very loud, boisterous little guy from, uh, New Jersey, like, from, uh, Boston, like I said, and he, he loves his ma, hi ma, and, um, there's some very interesting shit involving Scout and Spy, we will talk about that later, yes, that was confirmed. Then after that, you have the, my tongue is being possessed by Satan, he uses baseball bats, he's run, he double jumps, and he's very highly addicted to caffeine. I thought you guys liked to know this. And also, ladies, he's single. Who doesn't want to date this? I don't want to date this. I want to punch this. <laughs> he has some adorable moments later when you do, uh, when there's, ex when it comes to expiration date, but again. Yeah, we don't talk about the shotguns. Um... So he's a very, he's a sweet boy, but he's also a fucking idiot, and I want to fucking punch him sometimes, because he's one of those guys who I know would most likely say something very, very sexist, and he will get kicked in the nuts, and also he allegedly lost his virginity to a bucket of fried chicken. <laughs> That's not canon. <laughs> That's the joke. He, he has also a massive issue of accepting that Miss Pauling is not interested in him, and I don't care how much you try to flirt, Scout, stop flirting with her. She ain't into ya. She never will be. She's a lesbian. Confirmed. Also confirmed to annoy people. But um, then you also have the soldier, who is um, very special. Very, very special. Very, very special. Soldier is special. Uh, <laughs> how do we explain the soldier without using certain words? Um, that's, that's soldier. That's not his best photo, but it's the first photo on the list I have of him. Um, soldier is... A man who's really ura and loves America, but in like the funniest way o ever. Uh, he wanted to fight in World War II. Basically, he was rejected from every branch of the military. He bought his own ticket to Europe, and basically, after figuring out where Poland was, decided to kick uh, kick spicy German ass. But um, and award himself several medals for it. But like you know, the war kind of sort of died in the year 1949 in this universe. I know it. Like I think it ended a lot sooner. So he did that. Um, how do I also explain Soldier? Soldier's very America, hell yeah. And is also best friends with the demo man of the opposite team. Okay, it ended. No, it ended in 49. He's a great soldier. He's a great man. Maybe even the best. He also is best friends with the demo man of the opposite team. There was a lovely little comic based around it, which I really enjoyed. And they actually did have lines that were based off of it, but they cut it off. Um... And they cut them out, which is sad. Uh, he was voiced by Rick May. R.I.P. Rick May, you fucking hero. Um, 
who also voices uh, Peppy the Bunny. Peppy the Bunny? Whatever the name is of the rabbit in Star Fox. He voices that, fun fact. Oh. Uh, yeah, Pepe. Yeah, he's sweet. Uh, Rick May, RIP. There's actually a memorial dedicated to Rick May in a couple of the maps, which was very nice, and we did not expect that to happen. Man fucking kicked oh. the ass of cancer and g g kicked the ass of both throat cancer and a heart attack, and sadly he died of um, COVID. But he was a badass. Um, so Soldier also is in a relationship with Heavy Sister. More on that later. <laughs> Zana, I love you. <laughs> More on that later. <coughs> uh, we're currently covering the offensive classes, as you can clearly see. Uh, everyone like the problem is there's a was a problem in fandom for a while where everyone thought Soldier was possibly um, because he's very America f yeah everyone thought he would be a massive racist and there is a joke about basically how heavy and met and medic basically pretend they're Americans around Soldier but it's like an offbeat one off joke and I think Ring of Fired was it Ring of Fired that covered it one of the comics they cover it but like again there's. There's a little controversy when it comes to Soldier, but that's only because of fandom interpretation of how Soldier behaves, which has been counteracted in the comics a few times. Please stop it. God damn you fans, I love you, but can you please stop trudging up old bullshit? Uh, next we have is the Pyro! Ha <laughs> ha! One of my mains! My fave, my main. Well, one of my mains. I established earlier I have, like, four. My mains is, uh, Pyro and Engineer. I, I have the chart to show you how that worked out. Anyway. I love one, and uh, I'm very good with the other. And now we have one of the greatest, one of the cute little beans who you should fucking be terrified of, sweet, adorable, and can fucking bring you to a crisp, the pyro. <laughs> My sweetie. Pyro, uh, from unknown. Everything is unknown. Pyro's gender, unknown. Pyro's identity, unknown. What's Pyro like? Fire and unicorns. <laughs> the balloonicorn, which I want to own a balloonicorn, but every time they have the balloonicorns for sale, they get sold out like that, and it hurts me. It hurts me internally. Um, Pyro is a pyromaniac, if you haven't figured that out. And Pyro has this whole thing, which is basically... Yeah, Pyro is basically the icon of fuck you, gender norms. And every time I see people do artwork of quote-unquote femme Pyro, I get annoyed. <laughs> Because they put her in a skin tight suit and big old titties, and I'm sitting here going, "That's no, no." You want to know what fun Pyro would look like? That anyway. Um, so Pyro basically has. Uh, there's a theory what Pyro has on mental, meh, meh, because it is established in Meet the Pyro, which is again one of my favorite Meetas, where Pyro doesn't see the world the same as everyone else. While you guys see fire, brimstone, death, and destruction. Pyro sees candy, unicorns, balloonicorns, sorry, balloonicorns, rainbows, sparkles, and cute things, and Pyro is very innocent. So, who knows what level of trauma Pyro has, but we never really, they don't really cover Pyro's backstory, that's the whole thing. Pyro is an enigma. Hello, enigma, how you doing, Pyro? Ha ha! You doing good? Ha ha! Alright. Want to say anything to the audience? Ha ha! Uh-huh, they're telling you to recycle, by the way. Internet? Internet? Hello? I hear, I hear you. I hear you. Hi, hi. Refresh and enjoy. Oh god, my editing up for this video is going to be a pain in the ass now. Um, where was I? Uh, Pyro. Which, by the way, I'm, I'm going to have to drop off for a little bit. I have to go clean the turtle tank. Tell the turtle I said hello. I will. Thank you. He's good. He's a good grumpy turtle. Okay, so... Pyro is special, and Pyro is not on drugs. Contra contrary to popular belief, Pyro is not on any form of drug, and to be perfectly 100% honest, I kind of get very, very annoyed when people try to do the whole, oh, this character is crazy or, or is on some form of drugs. Not the biggest fan of that buckshot, I'm just saying. So, those are the offensive classes, by the way. <laughs> 
And now we go to the defensive classes, which are... Da -da 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 -da. Da -da. Trying to remember all the fucking classes. It's very... I, it's not trying to remember the classes. It's more like remember who's what, because some people do not play the classes as they are built, if you will. I know very offensive demo man, but demo men are considered uh, defensive. Now we're going to be talking about one of my favorite, one of my other favorite characters, and by what I, but what I mean by one of my favorite characters, I mean one of the characters I like to do a voice for, and I have a D and D character kind of sort of based on this man. <clears throat> Behold the demo man, a black Scottish skyclops whose family is the degrades who've re reached back to God knows how far. That reaches back a history a very long time to medieval times where they own a fucking castle. Their family are, but we'll stop that joke now. <laughs> we'll stop the accent. His family has been traced down back to the medieval era. They own a castle. They are, they have always worked all their lives. They have specialized in explosives and um, mercenary work. Basically, Degroot's name, blown up ship, is the family's game. He has been working since he was six years old. <laughs> now, there's always been arguments if he's actually related to the Degroot's or if he's adopted because of one little weird one-off line that happens in a comic, but it's never been touched upon again, so we can't confirm nor deny. Uh, hello, Arcadia Network. Welcome, and please enjoy the lurk. Enjoy the cat. Enjoy the lurk. Uh, where was I? Uh, Demo Man has been working for a long time. Fun fact, one of his first jobs was working for a wizard known as Merasmus. Hey, uh, you paying attention here, Survivor? This is where we get to your con- the part that you're confused about. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Oh, also, before I forget, Soldier was the roommate of Merasmus. We'll talk about that in a second. Uh, Demo Man basically lost his eyeball via Merasmus by, uh, he was basically hired by Merasmus to clean and dust books and was told, and I quote, DO NOT OPEN THE DAMN BOOKS! Not the actual line, but you get the point. And guess what young, dumb child Demo Man decided to do as a young, dumb, idiot child? Open, open up a books. damn book. He opened up the what is known as the Bomnomicon, and basically his eye was taken from him because he looked upon it. That is why he has no eye, which I think is actually very ah. kind of interesting. He opened the damn book, and he lost an eye. Did you learn your lesson? No. Okay. Which, also, his eyeball is a boss for a Halloween map. It's weird. <laughs> Welcome to TF2. We're, we're serious and we're weird at the same time. Apparently, my music stopped playing. Yes, continue playing the fucking music. Kind of need the music in the background so I can concentrate. So the Demo Man is an explosive guy. He also drinks Scrumpy. And fun fact, because I actually did research on this, Scrumpy is not of hard alcohol. It is basically a light apple cider. So the man might not actually be as drunk as everyone likes to think he is. And basically he's doing what a lot of people jokingly call the drunken master technique, where everyone thinks, oh, he's a drunk, foolish idiot. He's not that powerful. Reality, fuck you. <laughs> and basically leading people on. But there is a problem with a fandom just think he's a drunk. When in reality, he's a very smart man. He makes his own explosives. He makes and he makes his own explosives, people. Do you know how smart you have to be to be able to make your own goddamn explosives? Do you know how smart you have to be not to blow up by your own explosives? If I was a bad demo man, I wouldn't be here alive talking to you. Now would I? E. One of my favorite lines. It is an alcoholic cider, but it is a it is basically, if I remember from my research, the equivalency of like a light beer. <laughs> Like a like a stand, or like an American beer, so the alcohol content ain't that high. And remember, he's Scottish. Man's got most likely a better alcohol intolerance than me. Which I don't have that great. I don't know how good my alcohol tolerance is because I don't want to test that. Um, so he's Scott. He works for the Great the Group family. There is a funny little line talking about how his family were part of destroying uh, the English monarchy, and that line got brought up a few times after the death of the queen. Ah, uh, jeez. You shouldn't laugh! But I, I did. Laugh. I shouldn't. <laughs> we shouldn't. I'm gonna. So, that's the demo. That's kind of like the demo man in a nutshell. There'll be more coverage on him later. And there's a really fun, interesting thing which involves um, the Demo Man and um, his eyeball. And basically, we'll talk about that later. <laughs> because I've already talked about Merasmus. Merasmus being a Eldritch... Uh, I'll cover Merasmus for a second just to give you guys an idea who the fuck Merasmus is. Because I've mentioned him a few times and I think people would like to know who the fuck Merasmus is. So, Merasmus is a very interesting character. Where is my fucking Merasmus references? Merasmus... Where are you, wizard? I need you right now. There you are. 
Merasmus is a wizard. He's an ancient wizard. He's old as fuck. And there's common. There's a common joke about him. Basically, he's a a common running gag, thinking that his robe is a dress. It's not. It's a robe. Um, Merasmus is a wizard. He's a very powerful eldritch. Eldric wizard, actually, if I remember correctly, he does mention Eldritch. Hey, are you my domain, Marasmus? <laughs> Kidding. And he is not only, uh, not only was he the reason why Demo Man lost his eyeball, he is also the roommate, <clears throat> former roommate, of the soldier from TF2. And it's kind of sort of the reason why Halloween event happen. Halloween events happen. He basically got pissed off at soldier and decided to attack his work. Using the Bomnomicon as well as the giant eye, the eyeball, which is actually Demo Man's eye. Uh, another event. There's a lot of events where basically the reason why it's happening is Marasmus wants to. Uh, Marasmus actually also um, has run-ins with the Japanese mafia. Yeah, the Yakuza are after him. How funny it is that I, the Yakuza streamer, <laughs> you know, the fan of Yakuza, had a Yakuza connection before playing Yakuza. <laughs> It's all full circle, that's all I'm saying. Um, where was I? Fuck, Survivor's cleaning the turtle tank. Uh, so Survivor has a run-in with the Japanese Mafia and loses a pinky, which is also referenced in his model. His model got updated when that happened. And they don't call him the Yakuza, they call him the Japanese Mafia. I'm assuming to avoid problems. Air quotes. Uh, also while doing, also he does what is another one. The Halloween maps are a lot of my favorite maps. I'm going to be perfectly honest because I love the kooky. Uh, he did the carnival map, which is one of my favorite ones. And he's also the reason for bonus ducks, which I do not have a fucking bonus ducks redeem. And I really should get one. Survivor, write down, I need to put down a bonus, put down, look up a bonus ducks redeem. Vire's not here to write that down for me. Could someone write that down for me and tell me later? <laughs> Thank you. Again, he's a wizard. Also, uh, Marasmus was also the former roommate to Tom Jones. Yeah, Tom Jones is in this canon. Yes, that Tom Jones. What's new, pussycat? That's not unusual. Tom Jones. It's kind of weird because the uh, soldier kind of snaps Tom Jones' neck in the comic, and basically Tom Jones is dead in that universe, even though Tom Jones right now is still fucking alive, which is actually kind of funny, I think. Is Tom Jones still alive? Can someone Google that for me? I'm scared to look up deaths right now, and I don't know why. Um. Uh. I feel like I need to cover other things before I continue with the classes. So, that that's kind of sort of like Marasmus' whole thing. He's a wizard who basically the reason why Halloween events happen. <laughs> why can I... Why? Because it's fucking Ma Kiryu who uses, for, who can be, not only hit people with a bike, can become the bike and beat people. Marasmus, again, uh, Japanese, Ma uh, again, Marasmus is basically, the reason why Marasmus was made was basically to explain why the weird Halloween maps happen. Uh, for example, and uh, fun fact, also, Marasmus is also the reason why Soldier is a lawyer. Yeah, Soldier's a lawyer? That dumb idiot? He's a healthy 82 years. Oh, oh good. Tom Jones is good, everyone. <laughs> I was about to say, Erasmus is ancient. Uh, so, Erasmus was mainly made as a reason for why Halloween events are happening. It's just a fun thing, and they decided because of fandom responses and how they liked Erasmus, they kept them in. There are some people who actually do ship Soldier with Erasmus because of the whole roommates thing and Soldier being such a fucking idiot that he can't get the hint that they're no longer roommates and no longer friends or ever were friends. It's kind of funny <laughs> in my opinion next we have uh since i mentioned marasmus now we'll get to the other classes and i'm blathering again um uh the who is the other the engineer that's the other defense one uh engineer angie darling angie i need you my good old southern boy engineer there we go Oh, thank you, Zilla. Also, Zilla, good luck with the uh, uh the fundraising for Amundal. I w good luck on that, by the way. Tell Amundal I, w I wish him, you know, good luck and everything. Also, shout out Zilla while I'm here. S O at G M Zilla. Enjoy! Zilla is actually a very good streamer. 
He's a wonderful little streamer who does Warhammer stuff and other things, and is also my little PNG child! He's adorable! Uh, currently doing a uh, event for Amundal. But thank you. Anyway, so where was I? Engineer! Good old boy from Texas! If you want to get actually very specific on the top of Texas, because it actually does say what, what area of Texas Engineer is from. He is from a lovely little place known as Bee Cave, Texas. Now, Engineer, his full name is Del Konginger. Did anyone remember when I mentioned Konginger earlier? Yes! Del uh, Konginger here! This lovely little boy is not o is the son of the OG free the OG engineer from Team Fortress Classic. He is Oh. Oh! Sorry! I got the wrong one! Well, tell Amundal, uh, good luck on the breast cancer research, uh, charity then. Sorry, I must have gotten my goals mixed- I must have gotten my charities mixed up. I am so sorry. But, um... Are Pops doing that Monday? Maybe? He's already reached his goal. Okay. Uh, good luck for the breast cancer research then. His pappy has a much more, uh, mundane name. Fred. Yeah, Fred Konginger is the original TF2 classic engineer, who is his daddy, and his grandpappy- or great-grandpappy. Is it pappy or great-grandpappy? It's something. <laughs> it's either... Grand is there. I just don't know if there's a great or not. Uh, is Radingen, uh Cohanger, who I mentioned was the one who made the immortality device for Redman and Blutark. And also Engineer was hired to do that... Grandpappy. Thank you, Grandpappy. Uh, who was actually hired to basically improve on the immortality machines so they can be more efficient with the... Um, would become more efficient with the Australium, so it didn't take as much Australium to keep you alive. You bas basically optimization, if you will. Which he did, because money. And he wanted to do it, and have fun with it. And also he found his uh, grandpappy's old plans to basically give himself a fucking robot hand. Which he did himself. That's canon. He made the robot hand, removed his own fucking hand, and replaced it with a robotic hand. That is what is under that glove of his, by the way. It is a robotic hand. No problem, Zilla. Be good. Remember to eat your vegetables. And that's a robotic hand, and that is actually canon. And it's even canon in the comics. More on that later, because we're tough covering the mercenaries right now, and then we'll continue the fucking timeline. Which, you know, to be perfectly honest, I should have started with the time, then mercenaries, and then the timeline, but I'm an idiot. And it's too late. We're already in this. Full steam ahead. Whoop, whoop. So... As, and there's also the the final of the defensive classes, if you will. Uh, defensive is what they say. I would like to point out that TF2, you can get very uh, versatile with your classes. I have seen some pretty good offensive. I've seen offensive medics. I have seen uh, offensive uh, heavies. I have seen defensive pyros. I have seen everything. TF2 is very, you can mesh your own way. There's no... While there is a meta, a lot of people will like to... Uh, while there is a meta in TF2, a lot of people also like to ignore the meta. Because sometimes the meta is stupid. And not as fun. Now, the last of the quote-unquote defensive classes. The big old man himself from Russia. I could actually get very specific where in Russia if I wanted to. Come on. Do I not have a picture of... Ru I'm going to use this one. This is my favorite picture of him because he's covered with the cat's cosmetics. They... Oh, he looks so sad in that image. I don't want sad heavy. I want happy heavy. Give me happy heavy. There you go. <laughs> the heavy! My name is Heavy Weapons Guy. And this is my weapon. She shoots for him. <laughs> she shoots 10,000 rounds of special custom cartridges. It costs $10,000 to shoot this gun for 10... You get the point. Heavy Weapons Guy. I love Heavy Weapons Guy. He is my main when I play freaking Man, man vs. Machine. I love playing him. I love Heavy. Heavy is a great man, voiced by the wonderful Gary Schwartz, who is still an act who still acts to this day. And also <laughs> was in a movie that is connected to killer clowns from outer space, which because of me doing interview work with John Masari, I can technically connect myself to TF2 now. <laughs> I never thought about it until like a few nights ago. Because um Gary Schwartz, fun fact, was in a movie which was with John Masari, who worked on Killer Clowns from Outer Space. And for those who don't know, uh, before I became this lovely little streamer VTuber that you know and love, I actually was a part of an online entertainment news group. And one of the epi uh, online entertainment news uh, podcasts live stream thing on YouTube, which is why I have so much experience when it talks about YouTube, 
um, where I basically was, where I got to be a part of an interview with John Massotti, the head musician for Killer Clowns from Outer Space. And via that, I can not only connect myself to that fucking movie, I can connect myself to freaking TF2 because Gary Schwartz was in a movie with John Massari in it. Woo! I am connected to TF2 via freaking six degrees of Kevin Bacon bullshit. <laughs> Heavy confirmed for Killer Clowns. I would love that. I would love if they could get Gary Schwartz to voice something in the Killer Clowns game because then it's just like a weird, sick, twisted full circle for me. <laughs> I would love that to be perfectly honest. <coughs> I seriously would love that. 